Writing a good cold email is the only thing keeping you from landing an abundance of clients. If you can't craft a great cold outreach message, you'll stay in the trenches sending thousands of emails with little to no results. If you don't want that to happen, commit only 5 minutes of your time to find out 4 characteristics of a great offer that will turn your message from average to professional. And this isn't just another personalize your first line type of video. These are the same principles people like Alex Hormozzi and Frank Saunders use to get reply rate over 5% and sign hundreds and hundreds of clients. So if you listen and implement these strategies to your cold email messages, you'll have a chance to go from 0% reply rate to more than 5%. If you want to write a great cold outreach message, you have to understand one thing. It's all about the offer. It's not about how personalized the message is or how many times you follow up. It's not about if you include gifts in your follow-ups or like three of their last Instagram posts. These things might help, but if your offer sucks and you try to compensate with cheap marketing tricks, all you're selling is poop wrapped in glitter wrapping paper. The marketing tricks you're using are just noise and your leads see through that. You have to realize that people buy with emotion and then justify with logic. So even if the poop you're selling is presented nicely, once it's unpacked it will be thrown in your face with a request for a refund. And if you don't want that to happen, your message has to include four of these things. First, you have to be specific. A great offer shares a well-defined claim. If you're promising something, it has to be specific and measurable in two or sometimes even three variables. Result, time frame, and effort or vehicle. If your offer is something like, I'll help you go viral, it sounds nice, you have a desirable result of going viral, but I don't know how you're gonna do that. Or how long is it gonna take? I don't even have a clue what you mean by viral. Is it 100k views or 10 million? And what does help even mean? It's just confusing. Let's take the same offer of I'll help you go viral and make it well defined by adding results, time frame, and effort and vehicle. Here's what it sounds like now. I'll get you 1 million views in a month by scripting, filming, and posting short form content on social media. You have a specific result, which is 1 million views, a specific time frame, which is a month, effort needed by the client, which is none, because you'll be scripting and writing and posting and doing everything, and the vehicle, a method of how it's going to be done, is short form content on social media. This is much better. The prospect now has a clear understanding of what the hell you're selling and what can they expect. When you're writing your offer, imagine that the prospect will share your offer with the team. Could you imagine them having this conversation? Hey, I paid a guy $5,000 to help us go viral. Go viral? How? Will he scream our brand name in Target? Or will he land a plane on a highway with our logo on it? And is it happening this week, this month? next year? And what do you even mean by viral? Will we be in the news or just on product hunt? Imagine you're selling to a grandma and make your offer as easy to understand as possible so it leaves little to no questions. Now if you paid attention you know that this offer could still be improved. Instead of 1 million views we can be even more specific and mention a number of conversions. Instead of saying social media we can mention the exact channels like TikTok or Instagram. You want to eliminate any questions your client might have so they know exactly what you do. If you do that correctly, your prospect will know exactly what you're offering and the only question they'll have left is, does this actually work? If they doubt that, you won't get any sales. And to avoid that, we'll use social proof. Humans are herd animals and tend to copy the actions of others. Everyone's decisions are influenced by other people. That's why you see people buying new iPhones even though they have a perfectly working phone. They don't want to be ridiculed by their peers for having an older version. Everyone else is buying it, so they do as well. That's why teens start smoking. And that's why if your friends jump off of a bridge into a river, you will too. Because you don't want to be a loser. So if you want your prospect to believe that your product or service actually works, you need to include some type of social proof. Proof that the method has worked for others and achieved measurable results. And there are three most common types of social proof. Case studies, testimonials, and market social proof. 
Case study is you mentioning the result you got for your clients. Remember, these results also have to be specific, just like your claim. Share measurable results, what your client got and in what time frame. Don't be vague. Don't say, I helped my client earn money. That's not helpful. Name drop your client, make sure your prospect can search the name and find it right away. If they can fact check it, it's much more legit. And a case study can sound something like, we helped Salesforce increase ROAS from 2x to 5x. Phenomenal, right? <laughs> Testimonials are similar, but they're done by the client, usually in a video form. It's best if testimonials are also well-defined, mentioning exact results in a particular time frame. Testimonials work well, but because they're often in a video format, you cannot send them in the initial email due to deliverability issues. So only use them as follow-ups. And remember, it's important not to fake your testimonials. If you do, it will not seem genuine and the prospect will see through that. Let your client say whatever they wanna say. The most you could do is let them know what's important to mention but don't write them an exact script what you can tell them to mention is of course the results and the time frame market social proof is the least powerful of them all but it's a great alternative if you don't have any great case studies or testimonials to share market social proof is just you sharing how a public figure endorses a strategy that your product uses you see this often by people mentioning how alex hormozy used this strategy to get his first client even i did this same thing at this video star. So you could take your prospect's competitors and leverage their results as proof that your concept works. For example, if John's cafe got 10k followers on Instagram, there's no reason Mary's cafe can do the same and reek in the benefits. Be smart about it. A-B test every type of social proof to see which one works best for your niche. Using social proof will help your prospect feel more confident about whatever you're selling because it has worked for other people in the past. Of course, they might still doubt and think, what if it still fails? To answer this question, you want to include a risk reversal. Risk reversal is the third out of four principles that make up a great cold email. Risk reversal is usually a guarantee that if your product or service doesn't meet the advertised results, the buyer will get their money back. Of course, it doesn't always have to be a refund. You could also work on performance basis, meaning that you'll only get paid if the client gets some type of results. A risk reversal helps you turn your offer into a no-brainer so that your prospect thinks there's no reason not to try this. You're taking away the risk that your customer would endure and put it up onto yourself. This is logical because you can spread the risk amongst many of your clients while your prospect cannot do that. There's of course some rules you need to follow when you're offering full refund guarantees. Don't over promise in your initial offer so that you could actually deliver and not need to refund 100% of your clients. And if you're sending cold emails, be mindful of commonly used spam words because they often include words like guarantee and free or refund. You might want to use the same words in your risk reversal sentence and if you do, you're likely to end up in the spam folder. So don't use the synonyms. At this point, your prospect knows exactly what you're selling. They know that your service has helped other people reach quantifiable results. And if for some reason it doesn't work out, they'll get their investment back. Last thing on their mind is a question. Can they actually trust you? That's where social media presence comes in. Answer me this. Would you go to a business interview dressed like this? No, you want to look presentable. Why would you think it's any different in the online world? If you're not on LinkedIn or Twitter, you cannot be trusted. You have to realize that your prospect's default opinion of you is that you're a scammer and all you want is money. And it's not your fault. If you got hundreds of sketchy emails a day, you'd have the same view on everyone that reaches out to you via cold email. So if your lead looks you up on the internet and they see a Facebook page with an anime profile picture or an old Minecraft YouTube channel, it's not a great look. And it's not hard to change that. You don't have to be a social media superstar. Just post some lead magnets that I shared in this video, I'll share it at the end as well, post some valuable content, just be human really. Maybe add some pictures with your previous clients. It doesn't take much. Your goal isn't to grow a social media account. Your goal is to look like a nice person whenever someone Googles you. Like if you search my name, you'll see that I'm the head of YouTube at Salesforge and my empty Facebook. 
Facebook. There are no silly memes or gaming videos. Although with more effort, you could probably find some of those. And if you go to my LinkedIn, I have plenty of connections, real interactions. I'm a real person. I can't be a scammer because I actually have some reputation that I would rather not lose. And you need to show the same thing. Only if you have four of these things, or at least three of them, you can expect good results from cold outreach and start generating clients like crazy. Otherwise, don't even look at this video about cold email rules because you're just not ready for them yet. Bye.